trading range is when the price moves back and forth between support and resistance zones. And that basically is, is indicative of the supply and demand or the buyer and seller situation that at certain level, the buyers are stepping up, they like it at the, at the price, um, and, then, and then it moves up to a, a certain resistance level where the, the, the buyers are you know, pairing their, their, their positions back or completely selling out, or maybe sellers um, who have owned this uh, for, for longer are you know, finding that resistance level as an attractive level to sell their positions. So it's kind of a constant struggle and, and, and uh, a war between the buyers and sellers until the price breaks out of the range. If it breaks up, that means that all the selling has been uh, saturated and the buyers are now um, overwhelming the sellers and they're desperate enough for whatever, maybe there's some fundamental reasons for it, maybe some news, but basically the, the buyers um, finally soak up all the, all the supply and, and push the price out of that range. Um, and so the, the trading range is essentially that. It's, it's a period of oftentimes a consolidation period when the price has moved up. Now it's kind of consolidating, going sideways because at these levels, you know, people have made the money. They're taking money off the table, for example. New, new uh, guys are sort of, um, new traders are, are, are buying it as, it as it comes in. And so th during that period, there's a lot of that, a lot of the um, um, trading and, and uh, coins that are changing hands. Until, until that supply demand um, balance uh, is again uh, disrupted um, either up or down. And to identify the, the range, we, we look for support and resistance levels. And, and to do that, we need at least two touches on either side. So let's go ahead and look at, this is actually as of yesterday, a graph of Ripple XRP. And, and as you can see, it's clearly in the range. I mean, it doesn't take a you know, rocket scientist to see that the price is basically you know, moving sideways. And this is, I apologize, I don't have the timeline here, but this is basically, you know, this is a daily chart. So we're talking about about a month worth of data, or at least a month. For the last month, the, the price has been moving in a sideways, sideways manner. Um, and, and so for us to, to consider this as a trading range, we need to see a couple of touches on the resistance level. So, so you know, how do we identify support and resistance? We talked about it in the past. You know, you basically try to connect the swing highs and the swing lows, right? The lows, multiple lows, if they line up on a horizontal sort of level uh, and multiple times when 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 that level is touched. And, and the price bounces, that creates a support level and vice versa. The resistance level is when the price swings up, but is not, there's not enough demand, not enough buying going on to, to push it above that level. In this case, it's $1.20 and, and the selling ensues and the price dips back down. And now the buyers start buying it up again and it dips, uh, dips back down. So you got multiple touches here. You got two touches here and the two touches here. And that for, for me, that's, that's an established range. It's, that's a minimum for an, a range, but it is a range for me. In fact, now we've reached the dollar 20 again. Um, we can look at the platform, see if anything's changed in the last day. See where the price, whether the price has broken above the dollar uh, 20. Okay. Uh, you know, it, uh, Briefly did, but it um, <clears throat> but it hasn't completely hung in there. So, you know, m chances are that it's going to basically retrace uh, again and and bounce. Essentially, uh, the resist will not sustainably break through the resistance and and retrace back to a dollar. I mean, that's that's uh, that's uh, you know our hypothesis here. But the the point is that. Uh, we would be buying it if it does if we trace back to a dollar, that would be our, our buy signal. So after we identified <clears throat> one, two on the top, one, two, in fact, three on the top and two touch points on the bottom, we know our support and resistance level, I think are quite clear. That will not always be the case. Um, 
And then we can say, okay, this is a range. If it comes back to a dollar here at some point, this is where I'm going to buy it. Um, <clears throat> now, the other supporting evidence of the range here is, and I always like to keep the 200-day moving average in the picture. I'll get rid of some of the other noise, but it's the 200-day moving average, right? Let's put in three months. You see how the price is really respecting the 200-day moving average as a, as a support area or zone. And that's, uh, that's very typical. And in fact, oftentimes it can be a resistance zone. So it, it, uh, it changes, right? That's the polarity principle that we talked about is the when, um, when resistance is, is broken, it becomes support and vice versa. When support is broken, it becomes resistance. So the 200 day moving average, when I see that line up with a horizontal level like a dollar, especially if it's a nice round number, because the round numbers oftentimes are support levels, I'm sorry, support or resistance levels or key levels. When I see that line up with a 200 day moving average, that gives me a little more confidence level that this indeed is a key level, whether it's support or resistance. In this case, it is support. So that would be for me an opportunity to get involved. And that's a range that I could you know, possibly trade for a while. The way I uh, structure my filter, and again, you may play around after, after this to see if you can build your own and modify the one that I have perhaps, um, certainly test and see what comes out. But essentially what we want is a coin with price that has flatlined, right? A range is kind of going sideways. What that means, if I go back to, uh, what do we have XRP here? Let's, that, what that means is that, the, is that the moving averages in the last five, 10, 20 intervals, in this case days, will probably have also flatlined. If the price is going sideways, then the moving averages will also sort of start flatlining. And, and so let's uh, add to this chart, the moving averages, the 20 day, uh, 10 day, and the 20 day, okay? So it's these two, as you can see, if we take a, a bigger look here, right? Made big swings, but now it's just kind of really flatlined with very small, very small swings up or down. That makes sense. When the price goes sideways, the, the short term moving averages will also flatten out. And so the filter that I have been using to identify ranges uses this exact phenomenon, which is that I'm going to build a filter where the moving average trends. Now, this is not the moving averages, but actually the slope of the moving averages <clears throat> in percentages. Is the moving average trending up or is it trending down? So I'm looking at moving average trends that we calculate. In this case, I wanna say that the moving average for the last 10 days uh, is between minus five and five percent. So it hasn't. It, it's 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 up on the. Uh, uh, it's it's in the range of um, sort of sloping slightly up five percent or slightly down minus five percent. I want it to be in a very relatively small tight range, flat line, and moving uh, a simple moving average for twenty days. Same thing. I want it to be flatlined, plus or minus 5%. Okay, now I'm down to about 198 coins, but I still want to trade with the trend. So if I go back to uh, this presentation, the next important filter criteria is that I still want the long-term trend to be up, right? It's it's kind of it's I want coins that are still going up, but have taken a pause. 
They're consolidating, they're moving sideways until that buyer seller demand supply balance um, is, is a sort of uh, you know, absorbed and resolved and then it continues to go higher. Uh, more than likely, that's not always the case. But in any case, but I still want to, if I'm going to be buying these coins, which we will be, I want that to be in the trend, in the general sort of big picture trend. And that will increase the chances that, that I will be right, that the price will bounce off of that support and go back up to that re, uh, resistance. So, you know, I wouldn't really dare to do this strategy and really any if it uh, goes against the overall trend. So to uh, designate that I want the coin to be in an uptrend, I go to these trend ratings that we have, short-term, medium, and long-term trend, and I'll say the long-term trend is up. I don't need the short-term and medium trend to be up because clearly the more than likely they're gonna be neutral or maybe slightly up because we are looking for coins that are flatlined. So on the short-term basis, they'll be flat. On the medium-term basis, very likely to be flat as well. Um, so really, I just want to make sure that the long-term trend in this case is up. And that reduces the number of options or coins to 63.